Hello, hello, hello. I'm making a video. Uh, the baby dog is there across from me uh, on the other couch. And I don't want to swing the computer around because I'm, I might accidentally show Paul and he doesn't want to be shown. So... It's a lot going through my head. And I want to clarify different things as good as I possibly can. So about the dissolution of ego, the dissolution of the idea that there is any kind of hierarchy in the world, okay? the dissolution of society standards, peer pressure, the underlying basal continuo of stress that people have, and they're not even aware of it, and they wouldn't even want to be aware of it, and they're even in denial about it. Okay, so that's what's going on. That's what I observe in the world. You know. There are people that are on on sedatives and on like really heavy stuff like not shot not not even all of this is by the way all pharma drugs are toxic and heavy and bad and people won't they're in denial about it that it is bad for them they think they have to take it and then there are people who are also on narcotics and even yeah, some of those are even prescribed narcotics. And if they're prescribed, then the denial rate is even higher because then, oh, they all say, oh, well, my, you know, the professional in the white lab coat said it's okay or give, gave me the prescription. You know. So, and there are people that are on street drugs and they're in denial as well, of course. So, there's a lot of people that are in denial of taking any kind of, or of even of taking anything, but they're in denial of the stuff that they're taking being harmful for them. So they think this is all okay. They think that's a normal life, right? Like, for example, if I'm in the chat room and and they come at me like full bath salt, okay. And and I'm not like super responsive in the in the super cuddly, talkative, happy way of communicating, which I, which is actually my nature, you know. So I'm very talkative and and happy in communicating with people. But if people come at me with basalt mentality and with this, you know, with sneaky sneaky psycho terror and troll accounts, then yeah, that doesn't make me feel so good. And they see that I don't feel so good. You know, they're spying on my computer. They then they get mad that I don't even say anything while I'm on the computer. I don't even talk. I all just sit there and like stare at these troll comments, okay, and not feel so good. And then they, they get pissed that I don't say anything, that I'm not laughing or responding or like vibing with that psycho terror that is thrown at me. And then they will say, Oh, you need to you need to take some cannabis or marijuana pills or whatever, you know. You need to take some quaaludes. This is this is the official response in society. That's not just something that trolls would say or psychopaths or narcissists. No, this is this is something that you hear from the entire society. The entire society is is a quick pill fix type of society. Like, oh, you didn't get enough sleep. You only slept for two hours. Here, 
I have this caffeine mega drink for you. Or it's like, here's a quick fix for you. David Foster Wallace was talking about this very sternly and very, very critically as well in many interviews. Okay. And he also shows the mirror to society in his books. A great mirror. And in a very in in a very human loving way he showed the mirror. I couldn't do this. I could not because he's an angel, so you know, I'm not there yet. So if I wrote a book it would it it would come across as bitter. It would come across as very cynical. So, but David Foster Wallace, and that's why he's famous, you know, his mirror is shown with love and with a lot of leniency and a lot of, I don't like the word forgiveness, but yeah, a, a lot of forgiveness in a sense of a lot of sky perspective let's put it this way you know very understanding of the human condition and that and very loving of humans and very very much like an older brother you know is is giving a lecture to the younger brother who is completely out of control giving a loving lecture and not I have to always keep this in mind you know when I deal with people that it's what Jesus Christ already said they don't know what they're doing okay so I have to always come back to this sky perspective understanding of things it's not easy because I'm not an angel soul okay I'm not a God level I'm not a Buddha level okay? I'm halfway through with soul school you know soul school is still like full force hardcore in my in my life in my future lives most likely I don't know I don't know how close I am to moving up to that next to that to that to that next soul school ladder plateau okay so I don't know and it doesn't matter at all it wouldn't matter it doesn't matter where we are on the on our soul school journey okay so I always want to think of someone, oh, that person looks like that person. That must also be a God level soul, right? And and then I I I get disappointed later on and I see, oh no, they're not that advanced yet, you know. So they're like driven by ego. I'm not gonna mention any names with this. I have conversations with people on the internet, I observe things. I watch conversations, I'm very interested in that. So I'm not going to condemn anyone who is not an evolved soul. I care for them, you know, I care about them very much. But they are not there yet to understand. They don't know what they're doing. Okay? And that's the situation. That's what's going on. I still care about all living beings. That's my nature. I want to help. I want to bring awareness to the world. And I'm also a highly sensitive person. I'm I'm a human, obviously. I don't know if I have <laughs> alien DNA in me. Could be. I have no idea, and it, it wouldn't matter if I did or not have, or it doesn't matter really. It, it's most likely not the case, but it doesn't matter what where I'm at in my soul school. It doesn't matter what my IQ is. 
what matters is, the only thing that matters is, that I have compassion. That's the most important thing. If somebody said, here, you can have this, you can have ten billion dollars, but we have to remove your compassion center in the brain. I would not want the ten million dollars, or ten billion dollars, or ten trillion dollars. I don't want it. I don't want it. If that means they would have to take the compassion center out of my brain, I don't want any money. If they say, if they say to me, we'll give you the chance to live, but we have to remove your compassion center, or you, or we'll shoot you dead right now. I would choose them to cho to shoot me dead. So I do not want to live without my compassion center in the brain, the large amygdala, amygdala form formation at pretty much at the limbic system, entry, brainstem area, where information gets routed through from our sensory perception, from our tactile, from our from all of our senses, okay? It gets routed through that. And the amygdala, they evaluate things. They route things in a specific way, okay? And they, they see, okay, I see that there's another living being there on the couch. I love him, I feel him, okay? And I live here for him. I'm here for him. I don't want it any other way. Okay. I wouldn't. I don't see the point in living any other way, other than with this compassion, with that deep compassion for all living beings. Okay. I also have compassion for people that are driven by their egos. I feel sorry for them because they are. They are on the path of self-destruction. Many of them are on drugs. Okay. Drugs also, in addition, ruin people's amygdala. Uh, they're, they're, they're ruining people's mirror effect, the, the, the compassion system in the brain. Okay. So this is a very complex scientific subject that I'm definitely I don't know very much about. I read about it. I I watch documentary films. It's very interesting. It's very very complex. Not even the scientists themselves are very much completely understanding how all of that functions. Even Jiddu Krishnamurti said compassion is a mystery. Okay, so compassion is an energy, it's love, and that's not just in the brain, happening in the brain. This can be coming out of the brain and be here, suddenly, outside of my brain. It can be here. It can go to the door, it can go up into the sky, it can go all the way to the Orion Nebula, and it can go all the way to the Horsehead Nebula, <laughs> all of these different nebulas that are out there. It can go anywhere, okay? It's an astral journeying of the energy of compassion, okay? That is, that's an energy that is, that's the blue god. That's not just one god or several gods or, or a specific god. That's the infinite cosmos. That's the energy, that's the essence of, that's the perfume of the blue god, is compassion. Okay? And that can be big in someone and that can, that can be bypassed by someone, by someone's brain. They can be locked up 
they, can, they have shut themselves away from it. Okay, so drugs shut that down also. Dr drugs are really, really bad for people's brains. Any drug is really, really bad for people's brains. Trust me on this. I know what I'm talking about. I've seen it all. And I don't want drugs. Yeah. I don't want surgery. I don't want any of that stuff. There, were, there was a time in my life where I was in so much pain because I, I was quitting the pharma drugs that I said, what if I get brain surgery done to fix my depression? the pain that I was bombarded with all the time. It's just childhood trauma that we can feel. We can sit with that on the couch, you know. But it's very difficult, you know. I know how difficult that is. So it's not an easy thing to do. And it's not about some kind of transcendental meditation or yoga or something, you know. Those are all beneficial practices, but I'm talking about vipassana. I'm talking about the complete mindfulness, inwardness, introspection process. I'm talking about I am observing my breath, my heartbeat, my body functions, and the psychology, the psychoterror that is inside of my brain. I'm observing all of it. I'm observing the haters, the haters' energies. The, the only reason why they, why that even bothers me is what they're thinking and what they're bombarding me with, psychically even, is because I have that same pain, that same pain of, and that's what I want to get into in this video, the same pain of, I feel like a loser. <laughs> I can laugh about this, you know, I can laugh, I laugh about myself, but then that, that in itself can become an escape. I laugh it all off, you know. There's something in Germany, there's a, there's a therapy called laugh therapy. It's interesting that it would come from Germany. <laughs> this, this is very interesting to me. So, that's another escape. It's good to do also, you know, but that can become another act out. It can be another escape, a dopamine loop, bypassing that what we actually should sit with, you know. So... Let's sit with that. I'm a loser. Let's sit with that, man. Bro, oh, you're, you a loser. Okay. I'm sorry to say it. You know, I'm a loser. You are a loser. <laughs> you are. I'm not going to mention any names. Okay. So, my haters are losers. <laughs> so, I don't mean this in any negative way. I mean this with infinite love, okay, also towards myself. I'm a loser. We love you. Oh, then I'm going to be accused of self-obsession. Oh, yes. It's good. It's good to be nice to yourself. Huh? It's good. It's good to feed this system. Okay. It's good to put hydrogen peroxide water in your mouth. It's good to eat clay. Okay. Eat dirt and live. Okay. <laughs> eat clay and become well. Okay. It's good to do that. To be good to yourself. That's not self obsession. That's self love. That's self-care, okay? Deep self-care. 
That's what I do with my body, with my dog's body. That's what I recommend to Paul. He doesn't listen most of the time. I recommend I do that. I recommend that to other people. They don't listen at all. I mean, most people. <laughs> okay. So, but yeah, it's that I can't control their lives. That's not my problem in that sense. Okay. I take it on in terms of yeah. I want to lecture. I want to give advice. As that mother animal that I am. I love all living beings. I'm a dog mom. I'm the mother of all living beings. Okay. And if they don't listen to me, then they don't listen to me. There's nothing I can do about it. But I have to give this information anyway. Okay. What if there is someone who listens? What if the people that don't listen hear it with one ear? What if they don't listen and somehow that information does find some kind of spot in the brain. And that's mostly ignored, but that's still there. It's a seed, okay? It's a seed of self-care, of making the world a better place. A seed, at least. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm seeding my confetti of love to the world, and I hope that some of the confetti is seeding out into beautiful flowers and people's brains in energy form an energy seed of love compassion and insight self-love and acknowledging oh my goodness what they're doing in society is completely backwards how society is doing everything is almost everything they're doing wrong the human society is wrong in almost everything. Okay. Let's understand this now. This is not some kind of human hating <coughs> self pedestal. Okay. That's nothing to do with it. The opposite. I love all living beings. That's why I say it. You know. I'm not an anti-patriot if I find fault with the system of the United States or Germany, where I'm from, you know. If I say Adolf Hitler was wrong, that doesn't make me an anti-patriot. I don't like the word patriot anyway, so I'm not, not a patriot. But I'm just trying, using this word in order to communicate something here. I love Germany, I love the United States, I love the whole planet, I love the entire, the infinite, entire is an, is, doesn't even exist, that word, I love the infinite cosmos, I love all galaxies and all star systems and solar systems and black holes and supernovae that are out there there and and the planets with the ETs yes they are um, they are ETs oh yeah the ears are going up yeah they're ETs there ETs yeah they are they are they're aliens oh yes <gasps> yes the baby dog I can I don't want to show them Paul gets upset so if he even sees me swing the computer around he's like <laughs> and then I have to delete the video so but I love all beings and I say that all of that I say this only because I love not because I'm trying to be important or <laughs> some shit like this you know. it will always be misunderstood like that you know like oh you virtue signaler you the only way you must be doing this is because you are a grandstander. You are a busybody. I've heard all of these words. All, all, all. You know, and much worse. So, uh, you think you're holier than thou. All that stuff, you know. No. <laughs> I care. Care. Okay. I care so much. Some people say you care too much. 
I had a friend, she said, you're too honest, Nikki. You are too honest. With your honesty, you make your life difficult. I care about you. I want you to know you need to not be so honest anymore. <laughs> An angel soul told me that. She's no longer here because she could not be honest. She lied to herself, drinking alcohol. I don't know for how long, 50 years, 60 years, it did her in. Yeah. But they're free now, she and Birgit, my friend Birgit, Angel Soul, okay, my best friend Birgit from Arjanov's Primal Center, okay, so Birgit and I, we were like really one unit, Birgit was my new mother, and Barbara was also my surrogate mother, so Barbara was my dad's mistress, long-term mistress, and he liked Birgit too, I know he did, so, but Birgit wouldn't, she wouldn't go for him. <laughs> So, but they're together now in the Amazon, Zonian rainforest. They're both really large, beautiful parrots. Maybe they are macaws. I think they are macaw. They're macaw, macaw parrots. They are wife and husband, and they are together, and they're roosting, and they're free. And I keep telling them in energy form, stay away from those loggers. Okay. Keep moving if you have to. Make sure you make your nest far away from those cattle ranchers and the loggers and all of these poisonous people. Stay safe, you both of you and your whole family. I love both of them infinitely much. It's, tr it's a tragedy Barbara had to drink alcohol. It's a tragedy, she believed in kidding herself and lying and, you know, trying to, trying to basically cheat in the game, you know, so, and also, she cheated herself by being my dad's mistress. That's a horrible life, that's a horrible existence. Some people think this is somehow sexy. They, they think this is the best sexy thing I can get in this life, you know. I am the mistress. <laughs> he wants me more than her, you know. That's a lie. If he wants me, if, if this is just a general statement, if a man wants me, He wants my brain too, not just my body. Yeah. Yes, baby. He wants my my whole personality. He's not gonna say, yeah, I want your body, but no, I don't want I don't like your sassiness. That, you know, I'm gonna tape your mouth shut. I'm gonna shackle you down. So then I own you and I can do whatever I want. That's not my understanding of sexy. My worst hater, Zane, was this scrappy don't account. He said, if you don't like sexy talk, then go into a monitor chat room. Yes, that's what I have to do. I have to go into monitor chat rooms, unfortunately. I like the Wild West better, where I can also say some wild shit sometimes. Okay, But it's yin and yang. I get their sexy talk. It's like, okay, here's how their sexy talk is. You look like a transvestite. <laughs> you look like a tran, tranny. Are you a man? Okay, that's their sexy talk. They think that's sexy. It gets them hard. To make me feel ugly, old, 
and unfeminine makes them feel turned on. It's sexy for them, not for me. Okay, so it's it wouldn't be sexy for me in the same sense to be someone's mistress, someone's piss on mistress. Okay, I'm not interested. Sorry, no. Pick someone else. Pick some other piss on. Okay? Not me. I have to say this was very strong language because this is how I feel. I have very strong feelings about this. And sometimes I want to run straight, full force against the padded wall and pound the shit out of it and scream. My Medusa screams. I really do sometimes. I ain't no pushover piss on. Okay, just wanted to make that very clear. I'm a Medusa artist. Okay. It's it's either everything or nothing. My brother accused me of that. For you it's either everything or nothing. You can't just take a compromise. Hey, no, I'm not. I'm not going to take some shit compromise. I'm not going to do it. It's not going to happen. I'd rather be homeless on the street with some kind of cylinder head in front of me taking people's cash. Get some com get some cash. Get some cash. Here's a cylinder head. Okay. So maybe I'll, I'll sing a song by Alexandra Nefedov, Mein Freund der Baum. Okay. Make people feel sorry for me. <laughs> To put some more cash into the cylinder head, okay? But, no, I'm not going to do that unless I have to, okay? So, I'd rather do that than prostitute myself in any way. Being a mistress is fucking prostitution. And it is what it is. And, and I think a lot of mistresses don't know that. They don't realize that. They're like, they're like, they take this, they're, they're really, they're sidekicks. That's what they are. They're the sidekicks. They probably have that body and that juiciness that the elegant trophy wife that he has on, on his side that he goes to charity dinner parties with, you know that she doesn't have, right? But that's not good enough for me. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> there's the ambush. There, 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 there's the... No! There's the ambush. I'm gonna get upset. Paul, help! <laughs> help me! He's ambushing. I forgot. <laughs> I made a big mistake. <laughs> I forgot the perfume spray bottle. Hmm, oh gosh. I see when I use the water spray bottle and I have that in my hand, my hands are always very, very sweaty and hot. Then. <laughs> oh, brother. an American stuff word here, Terrier. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 yeah, he's gonna completely demolish that fluffy pillow. Completely demolish it. But, you know what? <laughs> it's okay. It's alright. Yeah, I wanted to turn this off. I'm gonna turn the internet. Uh, this is easier now. They did an update, so I just have to press one button. So that's pretty good. Yeah, he is demolishing this. I'm not, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna worry about worry about it. So, so not gonna not gonna <laughs> don't worry about that. 
Don't worry about give that to him. No, give it to him. No. no, he wants it. Give it to him. Here. Here, you can have it. If that makes you happy. <laughs> you want it back? Yeah, here. You want it back? He wants it. So, yeah. Don't worry about it. At least that keeps him busy. <sighs> the sudden, like, he would sit there. And he'd look at me, and if I don't pay attention, he has that look on his face, and I, it, like a fun look. Yeah. And in a split second, he flies at me, <laughs> and he will yank the computer down. <laughs> oh my gosh! I wanted to retire, but he doesn't let me retire, so. Okay, but anyway, yeah, I wanted to talk, I wanted to make that very, very clear that being a mistress is a lie to oneself. Drinking alcohol is a lie to oneself. Taking drugs is a lie to oneself. It's self-destructive, okay? It is disrespectful to your own body, to your own system to take any kind of toxic substance and that's the truth okay there are medicinal herbs out there that are not addictive that are highly beneficial that can do everything you want okay from uh, he's gonna shred that he's gonna shred that now that's no, okay I'll make a new one <laughs> he's shredding the camera guard <laughs> Yes, shredding the camera guard further and further and further. Yes. <laughs> yes, that is what he's doing. He wants our attention. Yeah, it's going to get the cooler bag too. But. <laughs> Baby dog, I'm going to have to get the cooler bag out of his hand. I can't. Uh, no, I need the cooler bag. That is my, that's my insulated. No, 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 no. Can't have it. You cannot have, it. cannot have this. You can't have it. No, I'm going to get upset. No. <laughs> I'm going to get upset. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to show this. going to spray. <laughs> this, this heater is too close to this and it's starting to smell. So, it smells like it smells like burnt plastic now at this point. <laughs> yeah this is not exactly a fully high-tech house. Frankenstein forehead. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah we have we have fan heaters in every room but I have a spray bottle now I can defend myself yes you know you better believe it and now he's good yeah, he is, he is uh, completely he's completely calm now <laughs> so, so from now on I'm gonna have to I have to have the spray bottle here on the side Yes, that's what I have to do. I can't do that at the chair. I have to sit here in in the living room and in front of my alien spaceships. And that works the best. So, yeah. 
I think this is very important that we go into our own minds and that we listen into our own brains, into our own minds, souls. The mind is the soul, I would say. Okay, so. And that we hear our bodies and what our inner voice tells us, you know. When we sit in, in meditation, then we are not performing for anyone. We're not even making this video. I feel like I have to stay on track and I have to collect myself and all of that, you know. So when I'm meditating, I let go of any kind of performance, of any kind of concentration. As Jiddu Krishnamurti said, when you are meditating and you concentrate, then you're not really meditating. So he doesn't really, he doesn't call that a real meditation. So there could be different types of yoga practices where you are focusing on something or where you're doing Im imagination type of thing, transcendental meditation, or all kinds of different forms of meditation, but <laughs> yes, it's a good dog. But the real form, the real meditation, is the inwardness meditation process. So different people have different names for that. Arjanov calls this primal therapy. Tiknat Han calls that mindfulness meditation, the Buddhists call it vipassana meditation, Jiddu Krishnamurti calls it the real meditation, real inwardness, and yeah, it doesn't matter how we call it, it's, it is sitting with whatever there is. And I observe. I don't judge. I don't suppress anything. Yeah, I have an ego. The ego will say something to me in my head. I'm not going to silence it. I'm not going to suppress it. I'm not going to judge it. Okay. The ego is a reaction from the pain from the past. Okay. So that's why Jesus Christ said they don't know what they're doing. They are basically reacting in out of pain. They're reacting out of their ego, out of their their childhood trauma, you know. So they hated Jesus Christ, the Romans, because because he was healing people. He did energy healing with people and the word gets around. When someone does energy healing, word gets around. And that that King Herod, Herodes uh, who didn't want someone like this to come into existence and some prophets told him that someone would come into existence like this so he had all boys slaughtered, all boy babies during the time when someone said that that some energy healer was born okay. And, well, that energy healer is not, that's not the most advanced soul himself. So, he did the very best he could, okay, that Jesus Christ And he's not that person that people think he was. He's not some kind of like sexless God. No, he was just a regular person and a good person. And he ha had a wife. He fell in love with Ma Mary Magdalene. She was a prostitute. He helped her to get off the streets. Okay. He empowered her, he gave her foot massages, he gave her massages and love, real love, you know, real love that you, you give 
to an orphan dog. Okay. He did that for her. And, well, of course she loves him, him back. You know, and They had many children together. They didn't have birth control. They had, I don't know, over 10 children. So, and because they weren't married, they were the, like really people from the future, you know. Marriage is BS. Marriage contract, some kind of contract? Like, here, yeah, sign your name. Now I am, I am owned, or he, I own him, no. Okay. It's totally ridiculous. So Terence McKenna talked about this also, that there was a time before people started to settle in different places, at homestead, when people were nomadic, when people actually were taking some hallucinogenic herbs and plants, they don't even know anymore today which plants they have taken. They may have taken plants that were very beneficial, didn't have any negative side effect. So I know that I'm pretty sure that psychedelic mushrooms have side effects. I think they are actually addictive and they can ruin people's amygdala. So they can ruin people's compassion center. And when you see something like this, then you have to stay away from all of those kind of drugs that are not beneficial in the long run, like LSD. And they really damage people's brains and I've seen that. I We have a lot of old friends that friends, not really friends, we know a lot of old people that have fried their brains. Some of them are dead now. It's very sad. And they have done that. They have taken a whole bunch of psychedelic drugs all the time and they thought that was healing or something no it ruined them it ruined their lives it ruined their brains they couldn't function anymore they had no more creativity at all they they didn't they couldn't meditate they were hyper anxious and anxiety and and confused and crazy in the sense of not being able at all to provide for themselves. You know, you'd give them, if you give them a million dollars, for example, or they win the lottery or whatever, they would spend that money in one year. Okay? So their brains are fried. They can't manage the brain. And there are lots of people that that can't manage money without ever having taken those psychedelic drugs. Of course, too, my parents are part of those people, this group of people that doesn't know how to manage money at all. And that's very sad, you know, that's not beneficial for your life. People that just squander money, thats how is that beneficial for your life? It's not. That's, that's the road to destruction, to self-destruction, you know, so it's very, very awful. But drugs, those type of party drugs, they really do that. They do that to people who may have started out having a fairly functional functioning brain okay and they ruin their brains completely with that and they all they have the bible in their pocket and and they can only answer with bible verses that's total insanity <laughs> so lsd and those are kind of things will do that to people there's a bunch of homeless people like that and you can't even have a normal conversation with them. And and I'm not going to try. So 
I, I sprinkle my confetti of love into the world. I will tell them, you know, my, for example, that one lady that I know, I'll tell her, I'm not going to mention names, I tell her only love matters. She comes with the Bible and I say to her, don't, <laughs> only love matters, love matters. And she will, yeah, yeah, you're right. And then the, the very next day she forgot about all of that short-term memory also completely ruined fried and then the next day she'll bring she'll pull she will flip the Bible up in a split second and she will she will justify something terrible that she just did with the Bible okay so yeah that's what LSD and shrooms and psychedelic drugs do to people okay. it's the truth you know it is the truth. We have no other choice other than to go into our own mind. And you don't do that with psychedelic drugs. There are herbs out there that, ha that, are, that are mildly and maybe even fully <coughs> psychoactive in that way, you know, psychotropic, psychedelic in that way that that trigger your pineal gland and that cause your brain to shed large amounts of DMT and maybe those plants are not addictive and maybe they are only ben beneficial and medicinal. Maybe there, there are plants out there. I believe Pieris japonica belongs to those plants. I think that oleander and camellia japonica and and rhododendron belong to those to that group of plants that are good for us but again you know they can cause cardiac arrest they can only be taken in absolute minutest amounts particularly for people who have never taken those so this is an art, okay, herbology is an art. The witches got into it, <clears throat> they knew what they were doing, okay. And I got into it and I'm studying this on myself, I test on myself. I, I'm highly interested in this. I only work with the plants that are directly in my vicinity. I'm not gonna try out plants from other regions. Why should I? It doesn't make any point. I mean, you can, but it would be so much more reasonable in every way, in the financial way and in the practical way, to use the plants that are growing in your vicinity. And they don't have to be native to your area. Some people have different beliefs with this, but then it becomes a belief system, becomes rigid. So, for example, the Argentinian pink pampas grass that grows right in front of this window here, and it's beautiful, and it's gorgeous, and gives us privacy in here. Okay. And you can make tea with that, and it has an amazing medicinal effect. It makes you cope with your life situation better, particularly if you have, if something happened, if you're in grief over someone, or if you, you got a new job, or some something, or something shocking happened in your life, and or you had an accident, or something that is hard for people. The pink Argentinian pampas grass, or all, I think all the the pampas grass, you know, with those fluffy tufts on, on the top, <coughs> like cotton, sort of like cotton feathers, all of them. I don't recommend making necessarily tea with those, with those blooms, with those, with those seeds, because they're kind of like hair, they're kind of difficult to manage, but I recommend making tea with the stems. They're very, I think they're very much related to horsetail 
and sugar cane. So <clears throat> all of those types that are growing on large stems in any kind of grasses and any kind of horsetail forms, those are the most ancient plants on earth. They're very, very ancient. They are they are pre Jurassic. So they're like Cambrian or I don't know how they are all of those phases are called. They're like they are from the very primordial stages of life on Earth. And they're amazing and they evolved into different species. And when you make tea with you can cut the stem into segments like inch long segments and like they're like this big around and then you can put that into a pot you put boiling water on it you let it sit for an hour or two and you drink the tea and it tastes extremely sweet so they're related to sugar cane they have a lot of sugar natural sugar in it if you eat the natural raw sugar you know or if you make juice with it so that's the whole that's whole plant essence whole plant sugar that's what you want to eat or or drink in smoothies or teas okay this is very good for you and that helps you cope that helps you that helps you with difficult times okay i've already tried that out on myself and it's amazing really really amazing it calms down your brain it sorts out your thoughts there are many plants out there that are very very beneficial and healing for us we don't have to take the stuff that other people take or that that are popular party drugs or herbs or whatever okay you don't have to take marijuana it's it has long-term brain damaging effect okay it's the truth I mean if you make tea with the leaves of cannabis or whatever whatever these plants are I, I think they're different type of those plants if you make tea with that that's certainly better than drinking alcohol so I don't recommend inhaling smoke. You can also put that into your blender and with plant milk. You can you can pour that into a pot with flour. You can make cookies with that. You can do that too. That is it is a medicinal plant, but again it has a long term brain damaging effect. So it's not, I don't recommend it. I don't recommend it in general, but it's better than alcohol. Okay? It's better than other party drugs. So that's just my personal viewpoint on this. So I don't recommend any of these things that are bad for the brain, bad that are bad for the health, that have side effects. <coughs> So I recommend those plants and those medicinal plants that are 100% beneficial for us. Some of them are listed as toxic because they can cause cardiac arrest just because a large amount of it can slow down the heart rate to zero. So I already tested all of this on myself. I ended up in the ICU with Pierre Straponica. That was in 2013, somewhere around March. I overdosed on it. That's not a good idea. But I came out of that very, very quickly. My blood infection was gone. I had more energy. I felt better. My Some of the wrinkles were gone. I mean, incredible, incredible. But, yeah, I made a video about that experience. The video is called My Experience with Oleander because I didn't know what that plant was called. I thought it was a form of oleander, but it's not. Someone who commented, some some expert in botany, commented underneath and said, you got a Pierre's Chaponica there in your hand. 
And so then I started researching Pierre Straponica. It is not that dif different from Oleander. It has very similar alkaloids. It has very similar cardiac arresting effects and similar poisonous effects, you know, if you take too much. There were animals and humans reported that have overdosed on it and died from it, so not very many, about 10 in the whole world, because most animals stay away from that. Wild animals, horses stay away from it. They know it instinctively already that this would not be good for them, that can slow them down. Wild animals, they have to be always alert. They can't be sedated. So they already know all, this, all of this from evolution. So the ones that have eaten poisonous stuff, they didn't proliferate their genes. So, but they are still medicinal herbs because if you take them in minute amounts, in, in herbal tea amounts, then, and, and that you have to be very careful with as well. If you take even a larger stem from like even as much as my little finger from I think the blue god agrees with me little finger amount of or ring finger amount of or middle finger amount of or forefinger amount of or some amount of this amount of a stem from a rhododendron this amount, this much of stem in volume from a rhododendron, that can, that can really ca calm you down, that can calm you down so much that you would lean back and you don't even know why you're leaning back and you think, oh, I'm just resting. I don't know why I can get up any time, but you don't. Okay, <laughs> That's what it will do because it will slow down the heart rate drastically and you will have really good thoughts suddenly. So, but if you take too much, like this much amount of a stem, that may cause cardiac arrest in anyone who has not, has never taken any rhododendron. So you have to be really, really careful with this. So I made a lot of mistakes. I learned from those mistakes and I only took like one leaf of Pierre's Japonica, which is about the size, but not in volume. And the leaf is flat and lance shaped, but about as long and wide as my thumb. I would take one leaf, eat it, or put that into my herbal tea. So you can do this. But if I took more than three leaves, then my heart rate goes way, way, way down. And then in some occasions I would take too much because I'm suffering too, so much and I want the pain to end. And that happened a few times because of the haters. Then I overdose. I went into my garden to get fresh air and then I could not get up from the grass anymore. I was constantly falling down on the grass and and I thought, oh my gosh, if I lie down now, then I will get a heart cardiac arrest. I need to keep my circulation going. And I kept crawling and tr kept trying to get up and falling back down. So very dangerous, okay, very, very dangerous. No, you can't take too much of that. That's that's definitely very dangerous for your heart and it can slow down your heart and cause cardiac arrest. And you don't want to go to the hospital, you know, you don't want to have to call the ambulance. And the last time that happened that Paul had to call the ambulance these people, did, they didn't even know what they were doing at all. They were all even like twice as fat as, as I am. They couldn't even carry me because they were just masses of fat instead of muscle. 
and I was way too heavy for them at 220 pounds and they were like 400 pounds and they couldn't they had to call the fire department to come with extra and they came with some very strong skinny skinny guys but muscular and they were able to carry me out there oh my god it was bad and I was there in the ICU for one hour and and they took that twig they took a twig of that plant Paul he took one of the twigs from the Pierre Straponica that was just blooming was pink bellflower and they laid it there on their counter and I had to laugh because there was this twig with the pink bellflowers sitting on that counter of the the IC of the of the ER you know the emergency room and this emergency room counter had never ever been been ever been in contact with a medicinal or was anything healthy okay so only unhealthy stuff is there like I mean crazy syringes and rubbing alcohol isopropyl alcohol and and drugs and pharma drugs and chemicals and all of that so there was this confetti of love sitting there on the counter in in the ER and I don't know what they would do with that. They'd probably throw that away. They wouldn't even throw throw that in the compost. They don't even know what composting is. The entire human society is completely out of touch with nature and with doing things right. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap the video up now. It's already over an hour. The only chance we have is to go into our own minds in meditation. Don't shut up your inner voice. Don't shut up your, your childhood trauma, your inner child. Don't shut up your ego. Don't shut anything up. It is all there. It's there for a reason. The ego is just trying to trying to protect the inner child basically from ever experiencing trauma again by, by, but by doing that of course the ego is not in tune with reality or truth in particular okay so the ego is just a knee-jerk reaction so let it talk let it chat away in your head just listen to it with compassion love yourself okay feel love for your entire being including the ego including the haters including all everything i love all my cells i love you and sit with that and don't judge anything and then let it unfold. Let it tell you the stories that you run away from. The demons that people call it. They demonize it. They demonize the ego and the pain. Don't do it. Listen to those demons. Listen to that pain that wants to come up and talk to you. What is it that you have to say? What is it? There is something. Okay, the haters, they want something. Yes, baby dog, he agrees. They want something. They need something. You know, the CEO with his trophy wife. Is that love? Is he loving that trophy wife? Ask yourself that question. To, he'll say to other people, yeah, of course then why is he taking that fat mistress with the big boobs? Why is he doing that? Why does he need to do that? Okay, He doesn't even love the mistress. He doesn't, he's so cut off from everything, disconnected. 
But why is he taking the mistress? Why is why is there such a split dual existence? Double life. Double faced. You know. Why is that existence like this? Because he's not getting his needs met. Okay. With the trophy wife that is constantly on social media with her face, with the camera above her to avoid showing the any form of extra skin or double chin or whatever. You know. Even if she's skin and bone, she'll still do that. Like the camera angle from above, like, I'm so girly. And then everyone thinks, that's what girly is, right? So if you're sassy, hmm, are you trying to be a guy? So, well, that's the, that's what I observe, you know. This is neurotic. This is a neurotic movement. The human species is a neurotic movement, as Friedrich Nietzsche said. The human species is a shuddering and standing still. Okay. It's not moving forward. So that's why my message to the world is introspect. What do you need? What is it that you really need? You need the mama, you need the woman with the, with the meat on her, okay? The flesh, you need the big mama you can, you can grab and hug, okay? You need that connection, you need the woman that is real in every way, in every way. The woman that that laughs with you, the woman that is not taking herself seriously, the woman that can be a clown, the woman that meditates, that goes hiking with you, that's what you need, okay? But the CEO doesn't even, oh, hiking, something for hippies, right? So the CEO is already so disconnected from all of that. But deep down, the inner, the inner child says, you're right. You're right. That's what I want. Okay. That's what that CEO wants, really. But he doesn't even know. He's not even aware. Okay. So you have to go into meditation. You have no other choice. Clean up your life, man. And then you can see the other people for who they are. You can see your trophy wife for the, the enormous suffering that she's going through. You can feel compassion for her for the first time. And you can go up to her and say that you have to break up the marriage and you're sorry about that. And you go through that divorce. You give her the chance to find someone who is compatible for her, with her. Yeah. My dad never gave my mother that chance. Never. So he lived a double life. My dad's a coward, that's why. He prevented my mother from having that chance of finding someone who is more compatible with her. Gunther Grass, the big famous writer, he liked her. And she always said she wanted a, she wanted a man, she wanted an intellectual with glasses. And that's, that's what Günther Grass was. But my dad came very quickly in between and said, leave my wife alone. Don't put your hand on my wife's knees. Huh? So possessiveness, right? Possessiveness, then that's just the ego. Not giving her the chance. He has his mistress. So, yeah, this is all, this is all neurotic. Okay? Love is letting someone go who obviously is not happy with you or you're not happy with that person. So, and then he should have married Barbara. Uh, and they were, they were soulmates. I have the spray bottle. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. They were soulmates. Okay, Barbara and him, they were already together in their former life. Okay, so they're meant there. They were meant to be together. Uh, but what it, does he do? He hangs on to the trophy wife, to the other one, the hard-to-get wife. Yeah. So 
that's ridiculous all of this but yeah it's sad you know i see all, all of this the hu i see the entire human species uh, the vast majority of humans are doing everything wrong almost everything maybe they're they're doing some few things right maybe maybe the ceo is quitting alcohol well, then he's doing something right there okay but he's still if he's doing the mistress and, and he is whatever he's spreading a virus to promote his pharmaceutical company then he's definitely not doing that right so most people do most things wrong so let's clean this up okay go into meditation you have no other choice <laughs>